Good afternoon. My name is Heather Rubin, and I just wanted to thank you first for letting me be part of this dialogue that hopefully will help create healthier generations to come. And just wanted to applaud also my fellow panelists who are doing really important work in this area. So to take a step back, um, in the five years that I've been at Disney, I've been focused on this particular topic. And I asked myself this particular question. What is it that we can do as a company to partner with parents and help kids live healthier lives? Now, unlike some of you in this room, I'm not a health expert, though I do work with many of them. Um, I'm actually a brand builder and a marketer. And one of the things I focus on as a marketer is making sure communication is two-way. So I spend a lot of time listening to families, finding out what they love about our brand, what they need in their lives to make it simpler, and what messages will actually resonate with them, what will help them make changes. Um, it also means that I, I do a lot of listening sort of more in a multidisciplinary way, where I'm listening to researchers, food scientists, business leaders, both inside and outside the company, again, with that sort of primary question in my mind. Now, Walt Disney said this. He said, my business is making people, especially children, happy. I've dedicated much of my time to the study of the problems of children. I think this is so important. It's actually framed in my office, and it helps... I think fundamentally explain the work we do in corporate citizenship. And it keeps in focus what we're trying to achieve and how we could achieve it. Um, so in studying kids and families, um, actually learn something really important. It seems as if they already know what healthy is. More fruits, more vegetables, more home-cooked meals, more exercise. But what we keep hearing time and time again is that things either seem fun or good for you. It's a tug of war, and parents don't want to be the bad guy. They actually want to create harmony in the house. They want happy kids, and they want to make healthier things, like healthier foods, simple and more fun. Now, one of Disney's you know, basic premise is creating stories and experiences that bring parents and kids together so they could agree more often. It's actually one of the reasons why millions of people welcome Disney in their homes and in their lives. Um, and it's actually integral to the Disney brand. Kids and families are at the heart of everything we do. And so when we have an opportunity to help them be healthier by reinforcing their already established beliefs in nutrition and healthy habits, and by supporting their efforts to raise healthy, happy kids, we're glad to help. That's why actually when we started to hear from parents that they needed help making their kids eat better. Um, and we started seeing evidence of an epidemic. We knew it was, um, we could be part of the solution. And in 2006, under the leadership of our CEO, Bob Iger, we made a commitment to do just that. We were the first major media company to establish nutrition guidelines that would associate our brands and characters with more nutritious portfolio products. And we knew this was the right thing to do for families, but also in the research, we knew that it was the right thing to do for the business. It increased consumer trust in our brand, and it strengthened the brand overall. And that was actually really important as we had conversations with business managers around the company, trying to sort of galvanize them around this commitment. And, bec oh, just kidding. Uh, and because of that, because we were able to work with business leaders across the company, because we had leadership from the top, and because we sort of took this multidisciplinary approach, um, we were able to get folks around the company uh, working on this commitment. So I'm going to roll a short video that will help show some of our efforts that we've made as part of this commitment. Hopefully you'll see examples from folks coming all over the company to make this happen, and you'll see how it comes together with a little bit of fun and magic.
there it is, one minute that pretty much summarized the last six years. Um, and now I'll tell you what it took. Because some of you might be asking, how do you in six years transform a company the size of Disney? And I will say that it really starts by understanding the business. So Disney operates in five divisions. That's consumer products, media, parks and resorts, um, studio, and interactive. Uh, we're in over 100 countries around the world, operating over 45 languages. So we're reaching millions of people every day. And what we all know probably is that uh, brand equity plus reach could go so far to make you effective, but so can understanding business models, supply chains, and the structures of each business. And so we're, we're operating in a very sort of diverse uh, company. And that's why we do have to approach this in this multidisciplinary way. And one of the reasons why we've been able to put some successes on the board is because we've been able to do that. So as mentioned, in 2006, we were the first major media company to set nutrition guidelines for our brands and characters. And just to touch on these, these were developed with the help of health experts. They aligned to the federal dietary recommendations, and they were organized by eating occasion and key foods that kids typically eat. They called for specific limits on nutrients based on child size portions, and they also called for zero grams of added trans fat. Now, imagine trying to take those guidelines and implement them company-wide. It was a massive undertaking, and it impacted all of our businesses. So just for some examples, in parks and resorts, this meant pioneering healthier default kids' meals back in 2006. And that meant having all of the kids' meals automatically default to a healthier side or beverage, like carrots or milk, instead of soda and fries. So of course, parents could request the soda and fries if they wanted to, but the default was healthier. Also meant increasing healthier choices, like fruit carts, low-fat options, vegetarian options, no sugar beverages, et cetera. In our studio, it meant shifting some of our marketing efforts, ending some deals with fast food companies, and finding newer ways to promote our films. In licensing, it meant rebalancing our food portfolio, which had, at the time, more sugar than we were comfortable. Um, we set what we call an 85-15 balance rule, which is 85% of our licensed foods would be everyday foods that met our nutrition guidelines. 15% would be reserved for those special occasion treats that parents expected to be part of their holidays and celebrations, like birthdays or Halloween or Christmas. Um, and while we were doing the changes in our food business, we were also finding ways to work in our media networks to role model healthier lifestyles and behaviors, um, whether it be with interstitials or um, healthier content in episodes. So over time, we'd spent a lot of time trying different things. Not everything worked right away. But a few years into the commitment, we started to see what was working. And in 2009, we really achieved some key goals. In licensing, we officially hit that 85-15 goal here in the US. Um, we eliminated added trans fat across all of our portfolio, licensing, and parks and resorts. Um, and in licensing, we sold over a billion servings of fruits and vegetables. In parks and resorts, of the 12 million kids' meals that were served in uh, the US alone that year, 60% came with the healthier default, in, uh, default beverage and side. And that was when people were even on vacation. Now, we haven't studied yet what happens when they go home, but something that we're um, possibly intrigued to do. And so uh, in addition to that, also the research showed that what we were doing was being effective. Um, parents were appreciating our efforts and noticing them. Kids were really enjoying the food and liking the content that they saw on TV. So it gave us permission to do more, and we were confident that we could do more because of the work that we started. And that's what we did. In 2009, we worked with regional uh, health experts around the globe to roll out nutrition guidelines internationally. And in 2010, we announced our multi-channel consumer campaign, um, really focused on making healthy living simple and fun. And the magic of healthy living launched with the full support and enthusiasm of our entire company. And I'll share just a little bit about some examples of how this comes to life. Of course, you can imagine Disney and our reach. It comes to life in more ways than I could describe in 10 minutes, but we'll do our best. So uh, with the Disney and ABC media platforms that are in over 100 million households in the US alone, they run what's called Try It, inter uh, try it Interstitials, or the Try It campaign. This really just invites kids and families to try new foods, fun moves, and simple ways to be their best. So that's running 365 days a year, but it culminates in a year-long, or I'm sorry, an annual special, the Try Athlon. 
And just a quick note, this summer, Disney XD ran our triathlon special, and it actually ranked in the top 10 telecasts for the network since its launch. And it's all embedded with messages that show good for you can be fun too. Um, Disney Interactive supports the work with websites and widgets and tools for kids and for parents. Um, so kids and families can really track their tries online and see how small actions could lead to something bigger. And we also uh, bring to life Try It events, and that's in our parks and resorts and local communities. And that's not even to mention what we do with Run Disney with our marathons and half marathons. But these Try It events, uh, just in 2012 alone, have um, had over 30,000 people in attendance, and we've activated over 30 of them. So there you have just a little snapshot of how Magic of Healthy Living comes to life. And what I think some of us know in this room is that behavior change really does require reach, frequency, and resonance. And some of those concept, concepts that I showed, I think, speak to how our messages are resonating and our reach and our ability to kind of have those messages be frequently out there. And what's exciting to me is the fact that the research does suggest that we're making a, di a difference. So 82% of the kids that we surveyed who have participated in Magic of Healthy Living some way, either by seeing it on TV, participating online, et cetera, actually said that because of the campaign, they were more physically active. 78% ate more fruits and vegetables, 71% drank more low-fat milk. And to me, that's really encouraging because it shows that when you meet kids where they are, when they're responsive to new ideas, we really do have the ability to make behavior change fun. Um, and of course, in addition to what we're uh, doing on our own networks, we're also really working hard to extend the access to healthy living to those who might not otherwise have it. So working with Kaboom, we will have, um, actually this month we will have bought, um, we will have built more than 30 playgrounds and learning gardens in communities across the US. And with Feeding America, we're actually announcing today that we are providing in a pilot program, 25 million servings of produce to kids and families nationwide. So there you have just a little bit of a snapshot to what brought us to today, where um, in 2012, we really took the next step in our commitment. And I think actually Bob Iger and the First Lady say it best, so I'm going to let them say this. Today I'm very pleased and even prouder to announce that the Walt Disney Company will be the first major media company to set standards for food advertising and marketing to kids. And going forward, food products advertised, sponsored, or promoted on our various channels, the Disney Channel, Disney XD, Disney Junior, and Radio Disney, will meet these new higher standards for nutrition by 2015. And this policy will also apply to all of our online family destinations. We're also making it easier to shop for product. The Mickey Check program and its label verifies that a product meets our nutrition guidelines. So when kids point to their favorite character on the shelf and moms see Mickey on the box, they can say yes and actually feel good about it. I am thrilled that Disney is stepping forward in such a big way uh, to stand alongside America's parents. Hey, this is a, a major American company, a global brand, that is literally changing the way it does business uh, so that our kids can lead healthier lives. So as Bob Iger had mentioned, our guidelines have expanded in scope. These guidelines have been the engine to everything we do. And as the initiative continues to grow and our commitment continues to grow, so can our efforts. So now the guidelines do include all kid-directed uh, food business activities, whether it be promotions or sponsorships, advertisements, licensing, and also targeted work that we do in our parks and resorts. In addition this year, we had also announced that we were able to update our nutrition guideline criteria. And really with the help of so many food manufacturers who have brought to market um, healthier products, um, also with the addition of the current standards that were rela released recently, um, we were able to do this and focus more on fruits and vegetables, low-fat dairy and whole grain, um, in addition to further limiting sugar and sodium. 
you heard from Bob, we announced a Good For You Fun To Mickey Check program that by the end of this year will be found in parks and resorts on uh, kids' menus, as well as online on Disney websites in terms of recipes and at retail with our Disney licensed foods. And then without um, minimizing it, though it is last, we continue to expand our Magic of Healthy Living initiative and our philanthropic commitment in this area, doing more. And I should say one of the uh, nice spillover effects of having the commitment be so embedded in the organization is that now I'm getting calls from various people around the company asking how they could get involved in this program. Um, we work with human resources now to see how we could have these try it uh, events and triathlon events be activated with our employees. So that's also sort of a nice um, unexpected consequence of this. And so I'd like to just leave you with a quote. It's actually a quote, quote that I see on my way to work every day. It's a billboard. And it shows this runner, and it says, better has no finish line. And I absolutely believe that to be true, having been an athlete before and now also working in um, a company like Disney that is so creative. Um, I get to work with Imagineers and creative folks around the company and see how that magic comes to life. And it really is a collaborative process. But it's one that actually has a very clear goal. And so I think with our clear goal of helping create healthier generations, with our focus of staying true to the Disney equity, true to our uh, consumers, and have a multidisciplinary approach to this, um, we really can help make a difference. Um, where we're going next, this has been a long journey. We will continue to implement our guidelines. We will continue to monitor them. We will continue to report on them in our corporate citizenship report. So I definitely encourage you, first, um, if I've said anything that inspires any ideas, please feel free to email me if you have any questions. I'd also like to take those. Um, in addition, if you do email me and you'd like to hear more about what we're doing, I'm happy to provide that as well. But if you're interested also more in the magic of healthy living, we've provided a website here. It's very long. We should probably have a vanity URL for you. And also our report. Um, you could definitely check out the corporate citizenship report. It is um, refreshed on an annual basis. And it's where we do um, uh, measure and track and announce uh, our progress in this space. So thank you again.